Hi, my name is Susie and welcome to Scrambling in the Kitchen. I don't know about you, but when I'm in the kitchen, I just find myself throwing things together. Uh, in doing that, I came up with a new carrot cake recipe that my family really liked, so I thought you might like, so let's get started. This is what we call carroty cakey. The exact ingredient list and measurements will be in the comments. This is just giving you a quick overview of what's going to be going into this recipe. So run to the store, grab all these things, use fresh nutmeg, and get to working in your kitchen. You'll like this recipe. One thing um, when I'm baking is I always use unsalted butter, and so make sure you do the same. It's a great idea to get everything ready on the counter before you start baking. In my mixing bowl, I have the brown sugar and the white sugar, and I'm about to put in the eggs. We're gonna mix these together until they're kind of fluffy. For today, you'll see I'm using a lot of eggs and a lot of different things because today I am doubling the recipe so I can give some carrot cake as gifts to our neighbors. So when I put the eggs in, I like to put a few in, let them mix a little bit, put a few more, etc. And so these are the last three going in. I've switched to the whisk attachment because that works better for cakes. And now I'm gonna mix all my dry ingredients together, which is baking powder, baking soda, cinnamon. I like fresh nutmeg and salt. As you can see, it's white and really smooth in the mixer, and I have got my flour and other dry ingredients together, and I will make sure that these incorporate before I put them into my mixer, which I'm sure you've seen before, but it really is important to do it this way, I think. And then the next thing I'm gonna be adding before I add the flour is I'm gonna be adding the butter which I've melted and added the vanilla to it. And I'm gonna be adding sour cream to my liquid mixture before I put the flour in because the flour you do not want to mix for a long time. As you know, the gluten will begin to make the cake tougher and we don't want that. So I've got my butter and it should have been melted and kind of cooled down and I've got it with the, um, vanilla because you don't want hot butter cooking your batter before it goes into the cake. And then I am doubling my recipe but uses just a cup of sour cream that I'm going to throw the sour cream in and get to be mixing. So the thing about sour cream is you don't want to mix it a long time. I, I don't have it warmed to room temperature when I put it in. You want it to kind of stay cool and keep the batter cool. You want little beads of sour cream in your batter because when they hit the heat in the oven, they explode. They help your um, cake be a little more fluffy and light. Um, and then it just gives a different type of a flavor to cakes. I'm sure you've put sour cream in other cakes, but that's why I specifically put it in my carroty cakey. So we are going to now incorporate our dry ingredients and I'm gonna put about a third in at a time and just until it's whipped. All right, the batter is just mixed and I'm just leaving it alone for a minute. I reserved about, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a cup of the dry mixture with the cinnamon and the flour. And I do that so I can kind of coat the carrots and the raisins, which you can see that, but they're just lightly coated with the flour and that's so they don't sink so bad. So I'm have drained my um, crushed pineapple and I have my nuts here and the carrots and raisins and I pretty much put those in all at the same time to get mixed in together. Just a few mixes and that's it. Um, it's also really good if you want to hand mix this in so that works well too. It looks like a lot but you need it. I'm barely going to mix this in. Just barely. Okay, so this is the consistency I get with that recipe. Again, this time I doubled mine, so it's really close to the top of my mixing bowl. 
but this is what you should be looking at. And now we are going to butter and flour two rounds. These are the nine inch rounds. And then I'm going to put our family's cake in a rectangle dish because it's easier. Okay, so I've heated my oven to 350 degrees. I have my cream cheese and butter sitting out, getting to room temperature while the cakes are gonna bake. And since I did a double recipe, um, I have to evenly split the batter between my cake rounds and my Pyrex rectangle dish. So um, I just kind of use a measuring cup and have at it. These round dishes are for my neighbors, so I don't want to overwhelm them with a life supply of cake. But I feel like who doesn't want free cake? Even though I doubled this recipe, the original recipe for one cake will be in the description of this video. If I make one cake, I can either put it in the 9 by 13 glass rectangle dish or the two rounds and make a double layer. Either way, it tastes great. Such hard work, not. All right, they're ready to go into the oven. You know, one thing I like to do when smoothing out cakes before I put them into the oven is I like to make sure that the cake goes a little bit higher on the edges and the corners and a little bit lower in the middle. Because we all know how when you bake a cake, when it comes out, it can be like a mountain shape. And so to me, that kind of helps with that issue. So I kind of move the cake to the corners and to the outside and dip it down in the middle. And I do the same to the rounds and I actually think it kind of works. So I've got my mixer all clean and dried again, and I have here the cream cheese and butter for the frosting. For one batch of the recipe, I use one of each. One stick of butter, one package of cream cheese, it's an eight ounce package. But I'm doubling the recipe today, so you'll see two of each go in. Also. I reserve one teaspoon of this butter to line and flour my pans. So, um, so really it's actually one tablespoon. So really it's one tablespoon short of uh, a stick of butter in the frosting. And you want these to cream together really well. So you really do want to have them at room temperature. And here we go. <laughs> Don't forget to scrape down the sides of the bowl a few times while you're beating this mixture together because it's really important that it gets incorporated well. Once you feel like it's incorporated really well, start adding your powdered sugar um, just a little bit at a time. Again, remember to scrape down the bowl. Very important. I also added a little bit of vanilla to this. And if I had lemon on me, I probably would have squirted a little bit in. But I didn't, and I don't think it's a deal breaker. But again, scrape down your sides and get it mixed in real good. All right, so that is the nice frosting that we make. And for each batch, I do uh, a half a cup of sugar. So today was a whole cup of sugar because I'm doubling the recipe, but usually it would be a half. Get it all creamy and then saran wrap it and get it in the fridge because you don't want it to melt it when you put it onto the cake. Baking, baking, baking. Okay, so for me, cakes, I don't normally stick a knife in. I just can tell it's kind of spongy and bouncy and to me I believe they still keep cooking so I like to take them out a little bit early so these are ready and it's been about 25 minutes and if you notice how even they are um, that's that little trick that I said move the 
cake batter to the outside of the pan. I think it works. So we're going to let these cool and we'll be getting the other cake out in a minute. Each neighbor gets one of the rounds. That way you're not giving them too much cake, just enough to want more. The small rounds are done. We cooled them off completely before we put our frosting on. I did put four small toothpicks so it kind of holds up and makes sure that the frosting doesn't get all over the saran wrap and we are headed to the neighbors. Okay, we are home. You can see everything is dispersed correctly. Things did not just float down to the bottom. It's a sign of a good carrot cake. This one, we did not wait till it cooled completely. We are digging in right now. So, carrot cake, cream cheese frosting. Hope you enjoy it. I'd love for you to try this recipe and let me know what you think until then, we'll see you next time on Scrambling in the Kitchen.